I'll be live in a second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 451. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to re review uh, questions asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert on the uh, uh, AdSense community. Uh, David uh, Masataki is based in um, um, Wimbledon, a suburb of London. He uh, is um, uh, also, uh, he can be found at wasaweb. Dot net. David Razam is a, a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of the UK. And um, David uh, um, uh, can be found at davidrazam.com. Tim Capper can be found at onlineownership.com. Uh, Tim is uh, based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, and uh, he's also a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. All right, we have nine questions to review here um, tonight. And uh, we'll just bring up the first one. Um, Braden Norwood asks the question. All right, here goes another is the title. Uh, over the past year, approximately, I've spent a decent bit of time building up a blog with relative success. However, one area I haven't touched on much beyond answering um, public relations requests from sites like HARO, I don't know what HARO is, H-A-R-O, um, is dedicated link building uh, strategies. Now that I have a decent catalogue of articles, I've finally started looking into the more intentional outreach for links. And so far I've been met with only a few flat out denials and a, a much larger amount of sites that require a fee for backlink addition. I have several questions, I'm just hoping to get a better grasp on the topic. One, I feel like paying for backlinks is considered black hat but with the amount of reputable sites asking for payment, am I mistaken? Will my site potentially be penalised for acquiring backlinks that way? And two, can anyone with experience potentially quote me a ratio for total outreach against the number of backlinks required? Although I'm aware this could vary very largely by industry topic, etc. cetera. And um, three, um, do you have any uh, tips um on how i might um, initially broach the subject with editors and webmasters for other sites in a way that might better incline them to hear me out is there any chance i'm simply wasting my time with current efforts or is it worth persevering uh in even when the uh, acquisition is minimal thanks in advance well that's a, a great uh uh, request for comment from um, uh, Braden. What can we yeah. do? You're wasting your time, Braden. Unfortunately, mate. Look, Harrow was okay 15 years ago uh, before the link builders got a win got a wind of this, you know. Uh, and now it's just it's just a spam fest. Uh, they literally they're not interested. Uh, don't even bother with that um if you if you do have something to shout about that you want the mainstream press to to do um you need to start building up your own editorial contacts over time um and then you can reach out to them with a new product a new whatever launch or or whatever kind of rehash of data or stuff like that that it would would constitute a story that's still very successful and pretty much all the kind of stuff you see in in media today like um there's a heat wave going on today so the ice cream company rehashes the data and says uh 27 flavors for beating the heat um uh, do you know what i mean 
So you rehash the stuff to what's going on, which then is fillable space for publishers. Okay. Um, so unless you've got something like that, where you can rehash data to what's going on mainstream for a rainy day for them to fill up column inches, you know, then, then they just, just, just forget going down that road. And, but another thing I want to, I want to, I want to sh shout like out to you. I, I don't understand why you've got this whole backlink thing in your head. Um, you know, your, your, um, your content should be doing the heavy work for you. Just remember what a link is about. Okay. A link is someone finding something interesting and then using it and then linking to that content. Now, um, I, I don't think I've like ever since the penguin days and, and penalty days, I've I've never I've never built a link, reached out for a link. I've uh, I just I just I just don't go down that road, and um, <clears throat> you you don't necessarily need links uh, in 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 that sense. Um, they will come over time, but just to give you like, and I know people go, oh, high competitive site. Yes, and you see it all the time going, hey, well, I did this and I fixed the site, and then I built some links and look at it going, well. It may take a little longer, but you look at your content, man. Your content's going to drive everything. Um, I took, I went into the crypto market eight months ago with a new site, <laughs> and there were there was a lot of glitches along the way in terms of all sorts of things. But um, we've just been ramping that content on every conceivable piece of thing around crypto and 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 things and now eight months later we're starting to see things happen um not for any links that have been built but for the the content that's been built um and it's already position number three in terms of uh crypto uh purchasing in the us so like literally man you, you just there's this whole outreach thing you can you know in the time it takes for you to one have some content two then start finding editors hitting out editors uh, reaching out because you already have to have that content in the time you've done that um over a month you could have you you could have put four five decent pieces on your own site or maybe four you know i, I just think if you're not in that world of journalists and editors and, and things like that, it's it's a uh, uh, you know it's a really hard slog unless you're going to hire a company that will do that for you. Um, but and I'm not talking link builders. I'm talking absolute like PR PR that will do it the right way. Yeah, N not 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 link builders. Yep, very good, Tim. Yeah. Um, okay, let's roll on to number two on our run list. It's one from Shayo Chai Lo. It's titled A Question About Aggregate Rating. Um, he said, we know we should only use a schema that is visible on the page, but some products have 100 plus ratings, which um, will not be practical to be visible to display all ratings in HTML or initial rendering. Is it okay that in the schema I said we have 100 ratings, um, but only display some of them before they click um, view more, um, loaded using uh, Ajax uh, upon click? Oh. Okay. I, mean, I, I have I haven't played with I haven't played with product scheme in a while. Um uh, no, I don't know. But here's a here's one uh, for you. 
uh, here's another one for you. Actually, um, interestingly, even if you don't have product schema and you're a trusted e-commerce site, uh, as in a brand or have built a brand, guess what? Uh, Google displays it without you in schema. Um, <laughs> I came across one the other day um, when I was looking for, uh, for hiking, hiking boots. Uh, no schema and it's displaying product schema. Obviously, it has to be structured uh, properly. Uh, you know, this stuff has to be structured and Google has to understand the structure across the site. But apart from that, um, no, it's surprising. Um, so unfortunately, I don't, um, yeah, I don't, uh, no, I don't know. You check out, here's the thing, check out Google Webmaster documentation. Um, and then pick the next e-commerce site that's your competitor that's displaying it and um, check their structured data and see how they're doing it and then find some kind of common ground in between. Thank you, Tim. Oh, I was going to die then because I, 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 I uh, thought I would have to answer a question. <laughs> you can answer a question if you wish. <laughs> you know, there's no, nothing in the rules of the house that say you can't. Oh, well. Okay. Number three on our run list is what we're looking at now. It's titled, Is it better to delete old blog blog content and for tenant? Um, shoot foot. Um Hey guys, uh, he said, I need to clean up content on my work's blog, but I'm torn. Is it better to de delete old blog blog content and for tenant if it's completely uh, um, irrelevant and can't be updated? Um, or 301 redirect to your blog's homepage or something? Um, I'm wondering if you're penalised for 410s um, and... Um, Google treats them like 404s. So, so like, I, I think you're just way overthinking this stuff. Like, so overthinking this. If it's crap, delete it, right? If it's never had a visit, delete it. Just just clear it up. Go. Let it, let it 404. Uh, you can have, Google said, you can have 50 million 404s. The other flip side is of a 404 versus a 410 is that this is a blog article. So if a product's never coming back, I would 410 a product or something. Like, well, it depends. But you don't need to 301, 301 it because Google will just, if you've, let's say, done, I don't know, you're cleaning up a large site and you've done 100. Let's say there's 100 in total and you've got 100 301s going back to your top main uh, forward slash blog, right, URL. Those you will see, Google will, will just automatically treat them as soft 404s. They will be like, no, I'm ignoring this. It's a soft 404, okay? Which basically means 404s are all right. The other flip side, also 404, is you can have a nice 404 page. You can say, you can have some, you, you know, you can get creative with a 404 page, you know, depending on what kind of company you are. I don't know, let's say you do vending machines, you could take a smashed up, completely broken vending machine and have the vending machine image there like uh couldn't find what you're looking for make it you know and then like what were you looking for uh here's our home page here's our products uh here's our article section you know um and then you give them a choice to 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 get back in to where and that's assuming that there ever was a link to this thing from somewhere that someone's going to come back through to right if it's never had a trap any traffic in a year it's never going to get visited, blah, blah, blah. But that's why I would use just 404 it, man. I think you're overthinking it with this 410s, like just 404 it. Yeah, and in any case, don't 301 redirect no. to your blog home page. Yeah, that's not something you should do. Yeah, you're, yeah, and Google treats them now as soft 404s in Switch Console. So you can see when you've like gone, hey, I've overthought it a bit too much. I've chucked in all these 301s. And then a month later, you like got 50 soft four of pause. And it's like, ah, yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. 
Thank you. Uh, Number four in our run list is from Kunjo Chohan. Um, it's titled, Should It Be Used with Medical Web Page Schema? Um, he goes on to, to write, uh, is medical condition right the right schema type to use on a blog post of a health niche uh, website uh, if the blog is talking about a medical condition? If yes, then should it be used with the medical web page schema? And your answer is no. So no. Because, <laughs> because, um, uh, no, I don't think you should. Um, because if you go through the whole, uh, I would have to see how you how the site's structured, actually, before I said that. Um, but quite honestly, uh, just give me one sec. Yeah, like is if this is just. One second, one second. I'm just double checking. Um, I'm thinking. So if it's like, if it's the top line, um, no. Okay. If this is a condition that is your primary um, page for that condition, right? And then you have offshoots. So, for example, um, uh, let's talk um, da -da -da. The condition is varicose veins, right? Varicose veins is the gen general term for it if that's your top line, but varicose veins also has um, venous ulcers, um, restless leg syndrome, uh, deep vein thrombosis, um, uh, varicose variscosities, um, uh, all sorts of like, you know, 50 other related things, okay? Your top one, uh, yes, for the varicose veins, okay? But all the other stuff as in an article, and that's why he's saying blog posts. So those others would be blog posts, um, but he, he, no, because they're all leading back to the main uh, issue, right? Um, but... I've just had a quick check of two massive uh, health niche uh, sites and none of the internal just articles have any structured data markup on. And they like across the board position one to 10 on every conceivable medical problem, condition. So I'm going to say you don't need to bother about it. But if you were going to do it, I would stick to marking up the very top condition and not piss about with the underlying medical conditions because sometimes, like, you know what I mean? Like when I say underlying, they are related, but those are blog articles. Um, I, I know what I'm saying. I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I have it in my head. I, I kind of just... <laughs> okay thank you tim all right sometimes sometimes when i'm speaking i know it like it makes sense in my head but i don't know how to explain it <laughs> okay 
Okay. Um, let's get a number five on our run list. It's titled, What Should We Do Next? Uh, Ali Shah asked, uh, hi, uh, excuse my ignorance, but what should we do exactly after doing on page, off page, uh, and tech optimization to a website? Um, should we just wait a week and then re optimize again? Well, anyone else? Um, yeah, I'll have a go. Um, I'd write some more content. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not uh, very much in, in favor of just marking time on uh, one piece and fiddling about with it on and on and on. Um, I'd let Google properly digest it and I would give your your customers and Google some some nice new content um, of equal and even better quality than this one that you've been optimizing like fury. Yeah, totally. And then what Bill said is you kind of completely just you've just assumed Google will be visiting, finding the already optimized page within a week. Um, in today's current climate, depending on what kind of site this is, it may not it may not see it for a month. You know, um, you can certainly have a look at the positioning after Google's been through it. If it's plummeted to all hell and back, you know, there's oh, shit. We fucked that one up. Um, but you know, in theory, it's probably going to stay the same, or maybe bump one up, or something like that. Uh, depends what you did to the rest of the site with in terms of how this page worked into the rest of that um, thematic section of the site, right? Um, but yeah, I would I would go David. I would like right look look for content gaps, right? What is going to what is really going to help this page that we've just worked on or this section of the site we've just worked on? Where are the gaps? Look at your competitors. What are the competitors doing better than you? Take some ideas from that. Uh, then check out other gaps. Create your own other stuff unique to your customers, right? Um, and what depends what kind of business it is, but unique to you and what you're trying to offer. And then and then go for it and then push that out and then reanalyze. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Okay. Let's go to number six on our own list. Um, it's titled, Is it better to remove it from my website? And Ollie Labour also asks, if, if an article is not ranking well, is it better to remove it from my website and only keep articles that are ranking well? No, no. Like literally, if your site's not ranking well, you're going to delete your site. It, that kind of just doesn't make sense. It may make it may rank better later. You never know. Um, you may want to come back and have a have another go at it and try to make it better. Um, but you know if. If you put it on your website, it must have some value. Um, well, she wouldn't have bothered to write it and put it on there. Um, so no, I, I, I will keep it. Unless it you are a, really... A seasonal thing too, David. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that was really what I was alluding to. Yeah, massively, massively. Um, the other flip side is you can also look at... Um, you can also look at because i'm assuming when you say the article ranking i'm assuming you're saying for the actual entire query right so you know look at what the other ones uh have produced um how broad is that actual article title like how broad is it can you include any 
um, more refined articles on site that will feed into that one that you do you know what I mean like uh, you, can you add more can you like sometimes I mean I often on the site you know sort of what what once a year or so uh, go through um, if a if a page has dropped a featured snippet or it's looking like it's dropped a little bit then I go back and look at it um you know these are like sometimes quick wins but if they're not ranking massively well um how can you improve it you know if you have the time certainly start analyzing the stuff and see what is missing there like i don't know um is that one particular article that is slightly on a more off key topic uh to the main site that literally this is the only article that covers a tiny small subsection of the industry and it's the only it's the first one and only one that you've got on the site you know so can you build anything more into that around that so that they're all working together like i don't know you need to look at it but certainly don't just delete it because it's not ranking well you know check out if you can improve it and check out you know um and, but also the flip side is, you know, you may be competing against some Goliaths. And let's say you're a, f um, a small fashion photographer, um, a small fashion brand, and this is your something about how we double stitch our uh, jeans, right? Uh, that makes you unique, except your article is about how we double stitch our jeans and when you search how we double stitch our jeans you've got every single big main brand there that's going to be a brand thing but that how we double stitch our jeans is going to be relevant to your actual readers who actually find you and like you as a brand and you know if they ever if they go through the articles or they do a search query in in, in your site uh, about your genes you may even reference it on your gene product pages it, do you see what i mean like it, it, it it's going to make sense but it may not rank well because you're competing against all the big boys but it's going to make sense to your users who come to you who want to know about how you double stitch your genes yeah uh, I'm rambling again. I know what I'm saying in my head. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Okay. Any others? Right, moving on. We are on number seven on our run list from Chris Leonard. Um, it's titled, He Wants to Push His Online Mugshot Off of the First Page. Well, we all want that. Um, <laughs> um, Chris Leonard said a, a, a client uh, received a, a, a driving under the influence uh, conviction and uh, wants to push his online mugshot off the first page when Googling his name. I don't want to say what his name is, but it, it's fairly unique, uh, though not one of a kind. Also, I'm a web designer, but this is my first foray into SEO or search engine optimization. His company website uh, didn't have his name anywhere on it. So we created a meet the owner page uh, with his name in it. After a few weeks, the page appeared on page seven of, of Google's search results. He suggested that we add his full name to the page of testimonials on his site. So I did, but um, should have researched first. The testimonials page appeared a, a few weeks later around page seven, then the meet the owner page disappeared completely. Now it's back intermittently, sometimes around page seven, sometimes nowhere at all. And the testimonials page hasn't showed up at all. So I'm curious if anyone has any insight into what the next step should be. Would it be better to remove his name from the testimonials and meet the owner pages and put it on the home page instead? I'm working, up, I'm working on spreading out the site since I know that will help. Thank you for any feedback. 
Yeah, well, Michael, yeah, Michael does well. So, yeah, fine, meet the owner, but, you know, that's normally like, uh, yeah. I would probably do one like Michael said. So, you know, um, you have a staff, you have a staff thing. Um, so on there, uh, you know, our staff or our management team. So he's got his mugshot there um, with his name. The name links through to their own page, right? And all of them will have to get this, right? But it'll be good for all of them anyway. Um, his name links through. It is, it's his name. That's the actual URL um it's all about him blah 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 uh not really a meet the owner kind of page um in there you can't say he is the owner or, or his title or whatever um and then same like mike said if he's ever done any uh, content on the site he should have an author page right uh which can kind of those two pages can work together read xyz whatever his name is uh, um, case studies or articles uh, regarding whatever you know then you can also still go down the road like facebook twitter i mean those those things uh just by the sheer scale of the uh, the um just by the sheer scale of the of, of the platforms um he should automatically start ranking his name so that's another two then the, then his name on there linkedin come on everyone's on freaking linkedin that that should automatically also be ranking for the name uh so what we're up to five now we just got five more to push down um you know what i mean there's yeah yeah like yeah um and then uh yeah you could look at uh an online reputation thing but you can build these things out um yeah you, c you can build those things out but as to completely pushing it down 10 spots well then you know you need to just all sorts of other stuff yeah as michael said you can't do it with one site uh, no. you have to spread it across no. and perhaps one of the effective ways of doing this is um depending on the budget um advertorial you know have an interview format with a picture um you know, describing the business and so so forth what they've done recently and if that's a news piece and if that's a piece that is syndicated across different publications that might help that might be one of the quicker ways to um push something out yeah thank you mr turkey Okay, let's try for number eight. Maxim Dupli um, said, um, it's titled, When Some Online Newspaper Articles Give Me Credit. Um, Maxim said, <clears throat> I have a question. If some online newspaper article gives me credit with my website, um is a no fellow no follow attribute is still relevant and doesn't have to appear in the link um i'm asking to write this credit um sport photography maxim duply um co.il is that israel no what yes, is it well, sorry, Mr. Tuggy. Yeah, it is. It's Israel. Well, there you go. Gee, the brain's still working. Yeah. <laughs> um, like Bill said, uh, it's pretty much across the board. They're all um, <laughs> they're, they're all um, real no follow. But you could, like you said, you could actually ask them for a link or you could actually ask them in a nice way to say you know um these these are the uh the new the, the the new attributes from google i noticed you do not follows could we have a link if they go no sod it you could say well mm, you know okay well, at least you try but i'm going to turn this on the head here which i always turn it on so that no like i don't know why you worked up because it's a no follow like you 
do an article, you get in the credit, your name is in there. If people wanted to click through, they can click through. It's like you're, you're thinking, oh, I don't get any kind of some like webby thing, right? Or whatever. Like, I don't even, I don't even want to say it. I don't want to like link juice, you know? I don't get any credit. You are getting credit. You're getting credit. There's a link that goes to your site or whoever your author is or whatever. So you are getting credit um in that sense now let's say you do an article on i don't know something something and it just really resonates and ten thousand people read that article i don't know you'd have to ask them for the analytics but ten thousand people read the article and out of those ten thousand a thousand of them ask you i don't know what you do um uh, something to do with sport sports photographer and then a thousand people go hey um i'd like to book you for our uh our, our sports game to be our official thing are you really going to matter if that's a no follow or if you had like a thousand people <laughs> phoning you up wanting to do business yeah you know, uh, it's the it's the nature of the beast at the minute nobody does no follows because seos have killed everything um and link builders have killed everything um you but if they're not going to budge that's cool you're still being credited there's not some invisible something that says you know you know what i mean um and if people are reading through and checking it out and actually giving you a call because they read one of those articles is is do you does it really matter about that no follow like that your website's not getting the the perceived metric over you getting a ten thousand dollar contract like does it really matter excellent i um he's a he's a uh, sports photographer I, I imagine what's happening here is that he's uh, his sports um photographs are appearing in uh, a report uh, about something sporting um and he's trying to get a proper as he would see it um credit rather than just his name um standing there underneath um a photo um and i guess it would be nice to have a a link because it would be that much easier for potential um uh, potential clients to find him but the i guess the thing oh, okay. is oh, so that is like the the, the 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 just thing underneath the image well yes yeah I mean, uh, that's the way i think so. oh okay if yeah. that's the case here's here's one for you uh, i don't know what your laws are in israel but in the uk as the owner of an image the person who took the image is the copyright owner right and if they're using your image, you have a lot of leverage. Now, I don't know what your laws are, but in the UK, you have a lot of leverage as a photographer. You can then go, eh, you didn't ask my permission. However, I want to see X, Y, Z, right? The other flip side is, is did you sell that photo? Like, how are they using your photo, right? And then if you sold it, is it really right for you to go, yeah, I want a link and all? Like, I don't know. You, you're going to have to play that one you know if you sold it already i don't know what the deal was uh if they certainly didn't publish it without your permission because well i don't know what your laws are in israel on photos but yeah i i, I guess you know there's that whole um is he being paid for it thing and you know if he's if he's being paid for it um and there's a, a contract um to go with it um particularly if it, if it's if he's got a good re working relationship with uh with the publication with the website then um yeah have a go at um at seeing what kind of link you can you can get done there but if it's a a big um a a, a, a big publication big website that uh passes lots of this uh, stuff we don't talk about with uh, web um, link juice um then you're probably up against a uh, a brick wall there and you may well and you may well 
upset your relationship with the website. Yeah, and you technically, just, and technically, hey David, they, because yeah. it's paid for, they they are following Google's guidelines because that's <laughs> a paid, that's a paid for link. They are following Google's guidelines to no follow that. They could differently attribute it, but they are following Google's guidelines to no follow it because they paid for that. That's a paid link, in other words. Um, it's a pay. It's a pay link from uh, from the origin, isn't it? They they they've paid for it, not the. Uh, yeah, they don't even not... technically need to include it, but obviously, depending on what the contract is, but there's still money being exchanged somewhere. Like it gets it gets quite murky. I mean. I think on the flip side, if Google if Google was to look at that and go, right, we know these photos are purchased, or like they use a lot of this guy's photos, and all of a sudden there's just a direct followed link. Well, I hate it because it's not no follow, it's still a freaking link. The attribute, right? The attribute is direct, okay. All of a sudden you've got I don't know. Let's say over the years they've done 50, 50 images from you, right? Uh, from that one publication. It essentially is going to look like a blog roll, right? He's got all these links coming out of a newspaper or a publication. I think they're treating us correctly, actually, for their protection in that sense. Like, and possibly for his because google's going to go this is you know what i mean plus that links at the top of the article i'm guessing the images up there there could be two in the in the in the in two images i don't know like a baseball thing there could be like the slow mo there could be two images in there like yeah i don't know if you think about it i don't know it, if it is photos like like david thinks it is that we're talking about yeah it actually may be better for you to have that no follow in there. Mm. This is difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I think we're done with it. Mm. Let's um, pick up our oh, with question. Last question for the week. Okay, so um, Marie Sa, um, the question is titled, I pulled the ranking list from the Google Search Console. Um, and Marie said, um, I've been tasked with creating content ideas for search engine optimization. I, I pulled the ranking list from Search Console. Uh, is this a good source to use? Okay, so there was a bit of confusion here because I said, yeah, you can you can use it, but it's this is for stuff already positioned. Like you've just said ranking list, it's already stuff published. Google Search Console is about what is published on your site and where it's appearing in the search results. So I then said, yeah, it's a great idea because you can look where your articles are appearing. You can do search and search different things. Um, and you can see that I'm, I'm, um, I look, I look here on page 92, I'm appearing for pink fluffy elephants, but we've never really written that article that's appearing isn't really about pink fluffy, but I do mention it a couple of times in there. Shit, you know what? Looking through all the content, we, we don't actually write enough about pink fluffy elephants. We don't write about the pink fluffy elephants mating habits we don't write about how pink fluffy elephants keep cool in the summer we don't write about how difficult it is for a pink fluffy elephant to eat an ice cream right so you've there you've got content ideas right because you're seeing where you're ranking and where you're missing right so yeah I mean, I, I, I probably every other week um, in Search Console with different clients 
looking at what's going on, what have I missed? Because things appear like with every new piece of content or every new tranche of content coming along, Google's going to look at things and you're going to see, oh, sure, you know, on page 90. So this article appears position two for the main broad, broader thing. But in there, I mentioned something, and Google's actually, look, there's a search query I appeared for for the same article. But, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, you know what? We don't actually write about that. And that's where you get your content ideas. But in terms of telling you what is missing, yeah, you know, that you're going to need other tools for that. You know, there are other ones out there. Yeah, and it, it, it depends where you are in the game as well. You know, obviously, if, if it's a fairly new site, your um, your Google Search Console data might might not help you very much. You might need to to look for a, a key phrase research tool um, and have a look at uh, something a bit wider than you can get from uh, Google Search Console. But um, you know, in most cases, Google Search Console is really good, really useful. For the reasons Tim said. Excellent. All right. I think that we're at the end of our tether for the night. Uh, let me see. Um, let me click it here. Yes, it's thank you for watching time. Um, we'll be back next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, before we go, I must thank um the, the people that um keep um uh Damasio questions ticking over um people like brenda malone um and um michael um yeah um all those people especially you guys um uh, and tim kappa david razam um Masataki Wasa. Um anyway, I'm rambling. We'll see see you later and uh, we'll uh, be back next week. Um I can't turn this off.